in the sand on Hamas, which they have done, uh, they're, they're not beginning to get cold feet now because the bigger picture, as you were mentioning at the end, is not Hamas. We're focused on Gaza. We're focused on the incursion. We're focused on what Israel may do in uh, the Gaza Strip. But the real villain of the piece here is Iran. They have armed and trained Hamas and Hezbollah and the Houthi rebels and Shia militia in Iraq. They support the Syrian regime. They've given direction and control. They've tried to create what Qasem Soleimani, the now deceased head of the Quds Force, called a ring of fire around Iran, and Hamas could be the first step. So that's, that's what the big picture is for Israel. It's a tall order to deal with. I think they can do it. Uh, but they, they, nobody should be of the view that this is just a problem with Hamas in the Gaza Strip. All right. President Biden was asked about that yesterday because the, the world seems to at least acknowledge that Ar Iran is the real, the real puppet, puppet master uh, here. Uh, he was asked what his message to Iran is. Take a listen. What is your message to Hezbollah and its backer, Iran? Don't. Don't, don't, don't. Don't come across the border. Don't escalate this war. That's right. What exactly does don't mean? Well, they've already done. Uh, you know, what, uh, what Hamas has done is launched roughly 5,000 missiles so far uh, into Israel. Some of those are homemade missiles, that's for sure. Some are procured from strange places and black markets, but a lot of them just came directly from Iran. This is Iran acting through a surrogate, as it would act through the uh, Hezbollah uh, in Lebanon and Syria as a surrogate, as through uh, Syrian conventional forces, as through the Houthis and the Shia militia in uh, Iraq, this is a perfect setup for Iran. Other people are bleeding and dying, and they are striking at the great Satan. That's escalation. The Iranians have already done it. Uh, it's like saying if you take effective steps against uh, Russia in Ukraine by striking targets in Russia, somehow Ukraine's escalating the war. The Russians started the war, and Iran, through Hamas, started this war. So it's not escalation uh, to do what former Secretary of State Al Haig used to call go to the source. Uh, to that point, though, and I, I take, I take, you know, sort of notice of what you said about why Israel is or is not delaying the ground invasion. We talked a lot last week about the fact that um, Israel's already facing this pressure. There was the talk about Israel has to abide by international law. Uh, you already heard the Brits talking about proportionality and whining and crying and on and on and on. But at the same point, if you're if you're sitting there and you're Benjamin Netanyahu, you realize going into Gaza. Uh, you're not really taking on just 30,000 Hamas fighters who are well entrenched. You're, you're taking on 30,000 Hamas hardliners uh, with a population that, of a million plus that supports them. It's a very different thing inside an area twice the size of Washington, D.C. If you're the Israelis, how does the fact that America does not appear to have your back vis-a-vis -vis Iran uh, and vis-a-vis -vis Qatar, for that matter, how does that play into the decision matrix? Well, it has to worry them. I mean, uh, President Biden has ordered two carrier battle groups to the eastern Mediterranean. It's good to have that capability there. But, the, but, but where the rubber meets the road is uh, if the situation arises, and we hope it doesn't, but if it did, would he order them into action? And I don't think I know what the answer to that question. I don't think the Israelis know. Worst of all, I think the Iranians think, based on his willingness to to uh, bend his knee and, and pay them $6 billion uh, to, to free five American hostages, I think they think he's weak. I think they remember Obama drawing red lines on Syrian chemical weapons during his administration, of which we may remember Biden was mm -hmm. vice president. Uh, I think they've watched the withdrawal from Afghanistan. They've watched the disarray in the policy in Ukraine, and they may think that they're secure. That, that's the worst part of all. You bring up the red line in Syria. I was in Israel uh, that the night that President ba uh, Obama announced he wouldn't attack Israel. And I remember getting the call, uh, wouldn't attack Syria. And I remember getting a call from a senior member of the Israeli military after President Obama said, you know, we're done and we're gonna kick it to Congress and on and on after Assad gassed his own people. And the senior member of the Israeli military called me and he said, well, we're on our own now, and you can imagine those in Jerusalem are feeling that way right now. 
I think that's exactly right. Now, that's always been Israel's position. They want to defend themselves. Uh, yeah. But it pushed into a corner, which is what the ring of fire strategy implies. I think the U.S. should help them out. They, they may not want it initially, but it's very important here not to allow mm. Iran to succeed. We, we don't know what the full strategy is. Remember the intelligence failures in Israel and in the United States that led us to this point now. It'd be, it'd be imprudent to have confidence what lies ahead here. Yeah, that's a very good point. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.